Hey there everybody, we are here at Sea Otter Classic 2023 and in this video we are going to nerd out on the coolest gravel and bike packing gear. Uh, let's go see what we find. We've brought uh, our hiker bike harness. Huh? So this just rolls up onto the top tube and uh, if I unroll this here, we've got two backpack straps and then you can carry a bike super, super easy. Do you want to try it on? Uh, I I'll let you do it, you're the pro. <laughs> so, get that on there. This kind of redefines bike packing. Oh yeah, <laughs> technical bike packing gear. <laughs> so for those that might not be familiar, why would one need something like this? There's a lot of um, routes out there now that are so tough and technical that it involves a lot of portage and carrying the bike. So I know Arizona Trails the main one, I think you have to carry the bike across the Grand Canyon and the bike can't touch the ground. So this is the bumper bar. The way this came about is one of our ambassadors. Uh, she rides a 42 centimeter frame, um, in incredibly small as you can imagine. <laughs> so we sent her a bar pack when we released it, um, but her bike was a little bit too small. So she started spacing it out from the head tube with some frame spacers. We kind of realized that by spacing things up and away, it brings the bag up from the front wheel. Great. So we brought out the bumper bar, but the main purpose is pretty simple. So this pushes the bar bag away from the head tube, mm -hmm. and that stops your paint getting scratched um, and cables getting crushed. And then also for smaller bikes, it gives you that little bit more clearance to be able to run a bar bag. This is the newest one that we just came out with. It's our AT pad. Um, for the big bike riders, mm -hmm. uh, seems to be very popular. We came out with all the colors, uh, yeah. so yeah, we're getting some some smiles. So, yeah. so it's 2023. A lot of people think the rim brake is dead. Like how how else? How are you guys innovating on the rim brake pad still? Uh, it's compounds. Okay. Compounds. Uh, you know, you've you've got to be nice to the brake track. Um, we control all of our rubber milling in-house, all the ingredients. We're always doing research and development on the compounds. So it, it literally starts at the mixing, rubber mixing department, into molding, QC, assembly, and then if it's going to go aftermarket packaging, you know, then we also package. So it's beginning to end. Our L keys are very popular. Most people know about our L keys. Mm -hmm. uh, what a lot of people don't know is about the hex plus design, what actually makes these things unique. So uh, a typical hex tool, is six points and when you start to turn it you're driving six points into the wall of the fastener which is why you're eventually stripping these fasteners out over time yeah, okay. so what we actually do is a hex plus design which is uh, it's our own patented design and basically when you start to turn it inside the fastener these flat points or shoulders as we like to call them are driving into the side walls versus the six points so it's never going to strip your screws out and these screws that are getting stripped out will be removed with the hex plus stuff so Everything that we do that uses hex has hex plus. We don't make anything that's a standard hex. I had no idea. I thought it was just all about the pretty colors. I know no, the pretty colors are just sort of an afterthought. No. So what we have, the helmet that we have on my right, is an old V1 Pro. So this helmet's probably from the mid 80s, like 82, 83, somewhere in there. And it was one of our best-selling uh, helmets of all time. It was kind of the do-it-all helmet at that time for Bell. We didn't have full face at that point. There weren't as many segments in the marketplace, so people just used one helmet for all the kind of riding they did. Coincidentally, a lot of the riding that those people did was gravel. Uh, so some could say that we've been in the gravel space you know, for 30, 40 years. The reason that I think this helmet is important is when we created the, the XR spherical helmet that we released at Sea Otter last year, we took a lot of uh, design and, and like styling features from the V1 when we started styling and designing this helmet. So this helmet obviously features a lot more of the bells and whistles and protection that you would have found in the mid 80s, like the uh, MIPS spherical liner. And it's also quite a bit lighter. Figuring out how we wanted to make this helmet look, we looked at the V1 Pro and we started borrowing some of the design language like the TriStar or the TriSpar design. Um, to kind of like have a nod to the heritage of our helmets. We also digitized uh, this camouflage pattern, gave it a little uh, a little update, but we wanted to have it be like a real nod to this old helmet. And it's been one of the things that people ask about the most. Lots of folks grew up with these helmets. A lot of people had them hanging in their garage. Their parents had them, they rode them in college, et cetera, et cetera. So when they come in here and they say, oh, that's the first helmet I ever bought. And it's really fun. It's a great way to kind of help tell our story. The Chris King, is known for being sustainable. Uh, I mean, sustainable before sustainable was even a buzzword. It's built into the King ethos from start to bottom. And 
Chris King has never made a rim of their own, and that's because they would not make a carbon rim that was simply going to end up in the landfill. Chris King would not put the company name on it. So R45 hubs, uh, fully recyclable process from start to bottom. Even the cutting oils end up getting recycled in the King facility. Uh, but the rim is revolutionary. So working with CSS, uh, who does fusion fiber, Chris King was the first partner. Uh, to really get it on the game. There are a couple other brands, Revel and other folks that are doing it as well, is fully recyclable. So this will end up being stems, tire levers, all kinds of other things. King has a lifetime warranty on the rim. And if for some reason it ever does break, you send it back to them, they're gonna pull your hub out of it, service you the very same hub. They're not giving you a new wheel and tossing this in the trash. Um, and then sending the rim back to be recycled, which is crazy. So we're showing off our our city uh, arc light pedals and our new pro arc light pedals with the uh, the traction pins. You know the way that the, the lights really work, right? Is we have these modules that are part of the light, and this is really just a light, right? And so what we did is we built pedals that can accept this light, okay. but you can actually use the light in other places. I can show you guys on on over there. But so there's three modes on the light. There's like a steady, a kind of a flash, and then a, like a eco flash. Okay. And on the eco flash mode, you can get 36 hours of battery. The light is uh, is the module will go in this like mount system we've got, okay. and the mount is similar to the pedals where it actually tells the light what color to be. So you can set the mount up to be like a tail light or a front light, and it'll automatically change the color from whatever it is to red if it's in the rear. And that's how the pedals work too. They, you know, they have their uh, the red is always rear and the white is always front, and it automatically knows. So what's cool is then if a car is approaching you, they'll know if they're behind a bike or in front of you. And then really the motion of the pedals is the real safety aspect. You know, the human brain instantly identifies like this motion, this bio motion as a bike. This is our Hanger Connect. Uh, it is a mount anywhere bike stand. Um, so the idea is it's just a super compact, highly versatile bike stand that you can pretty much mount anything. So here we have it mounted to our tent pole. Um, but a lot of people use it on van ladders, street signs, railings, uh, even like countertops and two by fours. Um, so you can kind of put it wherever you need it take it on the go, travel easily, uh, even like fork servicing, dueling bike stands, so putting it on the back of an existing bike stand and then having two bikes serviced at once, all CNC machined, uh, aluminum, stainless steel parts, really high end, can hold a lot of weight. So it mounts on the King, King Cage Many Things uh, mm -hmm. cage, and so that, that'll mount right to your fork. But the nice thing about it is it'll fit a, a full uh, thermos or a silo Nalgene bottle or a bottle of whiskey. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> the cool part is, you know, once you have the cage attached, this it comes on and off real quickly. Okay. Goes down there, that goes in there, and then these click on. This is just a half frame pack that's a lace on version. Um, and then the lower pack is kind of bolt in to the bottle cages. And then the two packs are like joined in the middle with magnets. Uh, that's cool. So that kind of like eat, eats up the slop, but doesn't require Velcro or anything. Right, yeah. And then this is the bar hopper. So a lot of burrito packs are like hard to get into, but we add a gusset to the zipper. Ah. So you can easily get your hand in and out of there. We've got the, um, what we call the spider rear rack. Um, this would be our hero product. Um, so it attaches to any bike. Um, as you can see here, and it comes with one cradle. Yeah, so the, the idea here is that um, if you don't have much space here for your, for a saddlebag, often if you've got a small bike, uh, it can be a challenge, or if you want to use full use of your dropper post um, or full suspension, you can get the gear out back in a stable way. Then this, uh, this cradle on top can be located on top, or you can locate it on the side. So you just uh, screw it off rotate it down down here and it can be located this way if you need to take a bit more gear you can have a cradle each side okay. uh, for those longer trips or if you want to keep your keep your top clear yeah we make performance denim so we, we source very obscure stretchy insulating um, hybrid fabrics that have the rock star sort of energy of denim but are really comfortable and designed for actually getting outside and, and being active and yeah so this is a bike pant you know we started making uh, jean shorts right about when mountain bikers started wearing only pants, not only pants, but in the like, you know, downhill enduro scene. And we're yeah. like, okay, cool. Well, 
we would try that, but we got to do it in denim. So we found a really thin, really stretchy fabric. We made like a big sort of area for knee pads. Um, we did like a bunch of zipper closures and contrast. So it's basically like a moto downhill pant silhouette in a technical stretchy denim. This is a bi-component, so it's woven together as a denim, so it's pretty like acid wash and cool on the outside, but it's insulated and fuzzy like sweatpants on the inside, and it's, and it's stretchy. I kept going into like Ralph Lauren and finding really cool jean jackets that I thought looked awesome, and I was like, oh, that's a cool jean jacket. And whereas pants have now become stretch in most fabrics, right? Jeans are fairly stretchy. Um, jackets are still largely 100% cotton on everything. So 100% cotton looks the coolest, it does. Has the most interesting patina, but they're very uncomfortable and boxy and kind of right. takes you like 10 years to make a jean jacket awesome, you know? Um, so we thought, heck, let's just build kind of like a chore coat, nice. sort of like a, you know, a standard jean jacket, but use a really high stretch fabric. So it's just buttery, soft, and really stretchy and um, people you know this is more around town less like actually biking but people uh, you know these have also sold really well for us so. yeah, I love the the old like French like workwear like chore coats it feels like that yeah. right this is the most adjustable dropper lever in cycling what it allows you to do is you can change the the starting position of the lever itself without needing to adjust your cable or even move your barrel adjuster so it has 48 degrees of adjustment. So you just loosen this bolt and then you can move this. So you can see the cable isn't moving. The barrel adjuster is not moving. You can kind of just get it to where you want it to be. That bolt only requires one Newton meter of torque. So it's relatively light and easy to do. A new thing today, we are launching an aluminum basket. Oh. Nice. Um, yeah, so uh, same form factor and size as anything that's gonna fit a Wald 137. So you can see like a sugar loaf here. We've got the take a trip bag, also a good example of something that fits in or just nothing and shove your jacket in, case of beer, whatever. Uh, we got all kinds of bolt hole patterns that perfectly fit up to our stuff, of course, but also we make it flexible so you can fit pretty much anything. Pattern is also Molly compatible. So if you've got any pouches, feed sacks, stuff like that, you want to put on the outside like this, um, you can put those wherever you want. One other is we have a pizza deck now um, for basically some beefed up Elkhorn uprights. Um, so eyelet ready like all of our racks, but then we've got all of the through axle QR fit kits to fit pretty much anything. Um, it's a pizza deck. What do you what do you want to know, you know? <laughs> yeah, strap some stuff to it. Yeah, so we are getting into panniers. So we've been working on these for quite a while, um, really dial in on all the details. So fully welded, waterproof fabric, all the things you come to expect of that type of pannier. But rather than most of the panniers out there in that category that have like a quick detach, these are totally off-road focused. So um, it's a cammed Velcro that goes over the rail, you can really wrench down on it. And then the strap that goes to the rack starts here, goes through the rack, goes all the way around to the front and goes clips in okay. so that when you load that, it's kind of preloaded by the gear in there. So there's no Dumbo ears flopping around. It is just quiet, solid, strong. We made it so all of the straps are removable and replaceable. So if a mouse ever chews through it, you're good. <laughs> you can just put a new strap, you don't have to throw your bag away. Um, and then the other one is we got a new trunk bag going on the same line of, of rules. So welded, waterproof, waterproof zipper, um, new strap design to make it like ultra stable on the top of the rack. Obviously this stuff fits all of our racks perfectly, but it's also gonna be really flexible and fit anything out there. Yeah. Um, the other thing we did is all of our branding is just embossed or um, we're working on the final details that might be embroidered into the Velcro here. Yeah. So super minimal, we're not gonna blast our logo at you. Uh, but if you want, you can throw your patches on here. You can put a reflective patch on here. Um, you know, we've also got clippy light spots, all that stuff. So we really try to think about the consumer and not like our brand blasting at you. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at gravel and bikepacking accessories. We've got a ton more videos on interesting bikes and really cool interviews. Uh, so be sure to subscribe to see those other videos.